back to Matthew chapter 7 today. I think last week we were around Matthew 5. We want to look at Matthew 7 today in verse 6. Verse 6. That has to do with some things that I want to talk about. Talk about casting pearls before swine. Amen. And I want to say what that scripture mean and don't mean to some people. Matter of fact, because Jesus dealt with judging. Amen. And I can say this to us today while you turn your Bible down. Uh, you're not judging a person if it qualifies the scripture. If a person is living contrary to the will of God, then they are judging themselves. Amen. So don't talk about, ain't going to judge about it. Oh yeah, you judge yourself when you walk contrary to the will of God. I can tell you something that you're wrong. I can tell you something that you headed to hell. I'm not judging you. But it's by your action and what you say. I believe I said something last week concerning body language and all those kinds of things. And when your body says something, when your action agrees with your body language, then you are judging yourself. So, but let's move on up to uh, verse number six, I believe, in Matthew chapter seven. Jesus says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your perils before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you or ruin you. Amen? So I, I'm just going to use what the scripture says, casting pearls before swine. Amen. Father, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Lord God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. This morning, we'll look at Matthew 7, 6, concerning giving that which is holy unto dogs and swine or pigs. Now, 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 in the scripture, some people are called dogs and some are called swine. Amen? I didn't call you a dog nor a swine, but the scripture indicates because he's not talking about four-legged beasts. He's talking, giving an example of what we ought to give holy unto those who may not be saved. So there's a spiritual meaning to dogs and swine in our scripture for this morning, in which by the aid of the Holy Spirit, we will discover what the Lord was teaching to us on what not to give and what to give to those who wanted to be saved by the teaching, preaching of God's word. A man by the name of Theodore Rinkin faced execution in 1646 because he had offended King Christian IV of Denmark by some things he had said in a book. King Christian offered the writer of this man two alternatives. He said to him, eat your book or be executed. Regan tore the book into shreds, soaked it in a can of soup, and started munching away until he had devoured the whole book. Most of us are not able to eat our words as successfully as Peter or Lincoln ate either. But let us take a look at the term used in verse 6 of Matthew 7 chapter today. So let's first of all look at dogs, swine, and I believe they're holy things and pearls. First one, dogs. Dogs in Jesus' day, dogs were not domesticated as they are today. No, they were not. Many packs of wild dogs roamed the Galilean hills attacking flocks of sheep. They were despised by the Jews. They were scavengers of the city. They were not kept in houses as they are today. Amen. Of course, they don't have souls like you and I have. Amen. Swine. To the Jew, the pig was the most unclean animal of all. One Roman ruler wanting to make the Jews angry 
kill a hog and spread the broth of a hog over the temple. When our law indicated that the prodigal son had stooped to feeding swine, he was saying that this Jew had stooped to the lowest of tasks. Amen. Because swine were not popular in Jews' day, and not even in their day to day. So then we look at holy things. When our Lord spoke of the holy things cast before dogs, no doubt he was thinking of those dedicated to the worship and glory of God. Mm -hmm. At any rate, he was speaking of letting holy things become commonplace. Perils, <clears throat> perhaps perils, stand for the good name of Christianity. As the Christian gossips and criticizes, it hurt the name of Christ and Christianity in general. It is like casting peril before swine. <clears throat> in a general sense, the perils could be the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Peril, that is. It's genuine. Praise the Lord. Our Lord said that the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls in Matthew 30, 13, 45. He said, when he had found the pearl, and when he had found him, he sold everything he had to purchase the pearl. Why? Because it was very costly, and, and matter of fact, it was so high that really money couldn't buy it. But he sold everything he had to purchase the good of the pearl. In other words, I sold out for Jesus. Maybe you can understand this that I could purchase the kingdom of God. I didn't do it with money. I didn't do it because I had such good looks. I didn't do it because I had such things or, or such great things in the community. But I did it according to my faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You'd be surprised what your faith can do for you when you believe in the Lord. So now, what verse 6 does not teach in a sense of Matthew 7. The gospel of Jesus Christ is to be withheld from some people. Verse 6 don't teach that. Amen. I know it said, don't give your pearls unto dogs or swine. Hear me out, then you'll understand why I said verse 6 don't teach that. Some people interpret this verse to mean that we are giving holy things to dogs and casting pearls before swine when we take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the man on the street. But look, in Matthew 28, he tells us to go into all the world. Isn't that right? He didn't specify to tell who should make disciples, teaching them to believe all things. Amen. And so, so there was no certain group that the word of God could not be laid over to. They may not accept it, but you will have done what the command told you to do. Amen. There are some who used this verse to oppose rescue missions, the distribution of tracts and Bibles. They said, that ain't necessary. They ain't the people going to throw away the way street services, jail services, and the sending of missionaries to foreign fields. They said, that's not necessary. But if somebody don't do it, how will the word get out there? They contend that some people are just not ready for the gospel, and therefore we are wasting our time proclaiming Christ to them. Well, I beg the difference. I still will tell them whether they accept it or not. Amen? Amen. Now, 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 they will have to be penalized if they get that word of God and then use it haphazardly. It's dangerous for us to know the word of God and walk contrary to the will of God. Amen? Now, 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 now you might fall in that category if you are living one way and trying to appease somebody else. Amen? The gospel must be changed for some people what they say. In verse 6, verse 6, don't teach this. We don't change the gospel because you look timid. And because you can't handle the hardcore gospel. We don't change the gospel. No, no, no. The word of God must stand. I can't water the word of God down. And I hope no one in here will water the word of God down. I've heard people know, you shouldn't say it like that, but that's what the book said. 
as the Bible says, I'm a thief, a hypocrite, a doctor, a fornicator, and if I'm doing that, that's exactly what I am. And don't just me getting bent out of shape because somebody called me a hypocrite. What I need to do is try to change up. Because see, long as I'm living here, got air in my lungs and got breath in my body, then I got a chance. If I'm a hypocrite, if I'm a liar, fornicator, or an adulterer, I got a chance to change it before I see my Jesus. Somebody better say amen. And I believe somebody in here already because the Bible talks about we once were. Uh-uh, come on now. We once were like that. I don't want to say you still like that, but we once were walking like that. Paul said it to the church of Galatia, you once were like that, but now, since the glory of God, since Jesus has come into your life, uh, uh, then there was a change in your life. Never will forget it. When I, I got my call from the Lord to preach the gospel, the first thing I thought about, my God, what kind of man you want me to preach the gospel? I know who I am. Somebody said, but you can change. Yes. You can change. Yes. And I thank the Lord that I went to work. Now I must tell you, I didn't do it all by myself. But through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And through God working with me day in and day out. I woke up one morning and said, Lord, I'm ready now. Because you showed me that if I keep, keep going down this road, hell will be my final resting place. But Lord, just so I can change it in the middle of the road. Hallelujah. I'm so glad, y'all, that, that the Lord changed me. I don't care what folks say about me. Yeah? You might have known me back when, yeah? You might have known me when I was cussing and drinking and, and acting a fool. But I'm so glad that the Lord changed the cussing and drinking. It changed me to a new person. You might have known me when I would look at a woman and I could look at an undressed head. But I'm so glad now that the Lord gave me a different eyesight. But when, when, when I look at you, I say to myself, that's a soul. No, 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 no. I know, I know. I play sometimes, but, but I'm real when it comes to my Jesus. So, 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 so some people interpret the verse to mean that those classified as dogs and swine cannot receive the demand of discipleship in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the gospel, they say, must be watered down to match one station in life in its spiritual growth. Let me, let me tell you a story about a man named Mel Trotter. Mm. Mel Trotter, a man, uh, father was a saloon keeper, and his father was a drunk. Mel often tended the bar for his dad. At age 19, Mel started drinking and gambling. He lost his job after several bouts with drinking he was finally sent to a hospital. He was given treatment for alcoholism. Discharged, handed a medical kit. Fifteen minutes later, he traded the kit for three drinks of whiskey. Even after the birth of his son, Mel continued to drink. On returning from a ten-day drinking spree, Mel found his son dead in the arms of his wife. Mel said to his wife, honey, please forgive me. I'll never take another drug. Mm. He promised his wife mm. as the hot tears streamed down his face. Mm. But two hours after the baby's funeral, mm. Trotter staggered home drunk again. Mm. But on a cold January night, yeah. Trotter had dropped to the bottom of his drinking spree. Mm. Trotter staggered through the streets of Chicago with the intention of ending his life in the icy waters of Lake Michigan. Aimlessly, he wandered through the doors of the Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago. And there he heard the gospel of Christ proclaimed as a man said, Jesus love you. Yeah. First time he'd ever seen the man in his life. The man looked at him, the preacher looked at him squarely at Mel Trotter and said, make room in your heart for him tonight. Oh, Mel thought about it, made room in his heart for Jesus Christ. That night in his life was changed. Three years after his conversion, 
Mel was appointed superintendent of a rescue mission in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He spent more than 40 years telling others the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't tell me you got to water this thing down. Don't tell me that you got certain folk you can tell it to. During that time, he used a lot of Grand Rapids Mission, Grand Rapids Mission as a base to start 66 other gospel missions in America, all designed to proclaim the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. Mel made a shame because somebody said to him, make room in your heart tonight. And let the Lord, Lord loves you because yet you are drunk. You were no doubt under the influence when he staggered into the mission. Uh, but God can take a drunk. Somebody help me. I said the Lord can take a shown up drunk and clean him up on the inside. Uh, I heard people say no sense in talking to that drunk uh, or talking to that drug addict because they won't change anyhow. Uh, well, if it was up to us, we couldn't change them nowhere. Uh, but I tell you, the word of God uh, is so powerful that it can change uh, the greatest sinner in town. Uh, the word of God is so powerful uh, that it can pick up uh, the worst drunk in town. Uh, make him not to want to taste a drink anymore. Uh, yes, it can. Uh, casting pearl before swine. Uh, I got a little bit more here and I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, verse 6 does teach us the, uh, the awful effects of sin upon somebody in life. Uh, yes, the effects of sin uh, can ruin us. Uh, sin uh, and rebellion lead some to respond to Christ uh, as though they were dogs and hogs. Yeah, as the gospel of Jesus Christ is proclaimed, some fall into the category of dogs and swine as far as the reception of the gospel is concerned. Paul even said to the church at Philippi, watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh, Philippians 3 and 2. We're told that dogs are those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderer, the, the idolatry, and everyone who loves and practice falsehood do not dwell in heaven. But there must be a change. You see, all of these names here, they can be changed. They can change their way of living. And they would turn to the law. Revelation 22, 15 tells us that. We must know how to share Christ with people of all backgrounds. Even though the gospel of Jesus Christ never changes and should never be watered down. No, no. We should use different approaches for different people. But never a watered down gospel. Let me tell you how Jesus did. Y'all remember Nicodemus, don't you? Nicodemus came to talk to Jesus. Jesus approached him on an intellectual level. He had the credential of being smart. So Jesus talked to him on his level. Amen. Our Lord talked to the Samaritan woman in a simple parable. He told her you've got to be born again. And not only that, when you come to this well, you're going to always keep coming because this water really can't fill you up. But the water that I'll give you is like a spring on the inside, springing up unto eternal life. And as he talked to her, he quenched a spiritual thirst on the inside. Don't you hear her saying, give me this water, that I want to come back to this well and draw any more. I tell you, our Lord talked to her in a simple parable. Uh, Zacchaeus, uh, the demanding Jewish merchant, uh, I would understand the word. Uh, come down from the tree. Uh, something simple as that. Uh, you sitting high, boy, uh, but come on down the sycamore tree. Uh, I, I 
don't want to talk to you for a minute. I don't want to talk looking up at you. But I want to talk to you face to face. You know how it was. Yeah, old Zacchaeus came down the tree. Some people like the Pharisees need the direct approach. Such as, well, you're a hypocrite. You just don't have to water it down. Whitewash sepulchre. Especially when you get holier than thine. This word teach them that you got to mind how holy you get. Because sometimes you can be holy enough, but holy on in the hell. You see, when you're holy under God, there ought to be a change in your life. Holiness is righteousness. Holiness is a living God word. The woman taken in sin. She understood the law when it told her to go and sin no more. Why? Lord, I'm already caught. I'm in my sin. And he just told her to go and sin no more. I believe that she did that. She got a seat in glory. As she tried to live right, she could live with her law. She could have told some folks, yes, I've been on the block, and I used many men, but Jesus told me one day when I got caught to go and sin no more, and I'm so glad he could have, if you don't mind me imagining, he could have said, I could have been checked out of here, but look what the Lord has done, he gave me another chance, as a result of me having another chance, I'm going to praise the Lord, I'm going to give him glory, like I, because he's worthy of all the praise, when I was down and out, when he didn't just use me, the Lord stopped by, not to use me, but to pull me out of my predicament, somebody here ought to be with me. God department. It's up to him to say who he wants to say. 
There may be some folk that won't get saved. But that don't stop me from testifying. That won't stop me from telling them about the goodness of Jesus. So he said, don't cast them before swine. But that has to do with a lot of Christian folk that get so holy. Now I ain't losing my time. Well then you, to me, you're doing the God of this justice. And sometimes you talk to them till you turn blue in the face. You talk to them a little bit, they never change. But don't let it be said, the Lord said, I gave you an opportunity to speak to that girl, that boy, that young woman, that young man, or that husband, but you wouldn't do it. Maybe all they want to hear you say, God love you. God love you. Make some room in your heart for God. And watch God step in. Now, I must say this to you. So a lot of folk look at it like this. Well, you know, Lord, come on and help me. Come on and fix me. Well, I found out this. You got to put forth some effort. You want to be the devil. You must put forth some effort. Amen. Don't, don't sit back. Well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. No. Get your mind on Christ. I'm waiting, but look, it's something I need to do to while I'm waiting. You know, I think of the scripture when I was just there to wait on the Lord shall renew thy strength. Now, if you're waiting on him, how are you going to get your strength renewed if you're going to try? He said, renew your strength. Amen. I'm waiting, but I ain't doing nothing. You be that marking time all the time, Lord. But listen, I, you know, I'm sending things to help you along the way, but you haven't, you haven't taken advantage of that. So while waiting on him, if I want my strength renewed, I've got to talk to God. Man. I've got to ask him, Lord, I'm weak, thou art strong. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Amen. Lord, I'm weak, but you can make me strong. Help me, Lord, because I'm at a point where I really don't know what to do. Yeah. And that's when God said, I'm glad you don't know what to do. That means I can get you out of the way so I can do what I need to do. A lot of times, see, we get in the way. I can fix it. I can do this. No, 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 no. Let the Lord fix it for you. But now you got to be waiting. Arms wide open, heart wide open, mind open. Lord, what you got for me, I want it. And watch God. And sometimes, I don't know if you ever had this happen to you, sometimes God will put people in your pathway to say an encouraging word to you. If somebody going to get it this week, somebody going to be in your pepper and say, I encourage the word to you, take advantage of it. Uh, don't stay down in the dirt. And when people say, well, no, you're wasting your time. Well, maybe I am. But time spent with the Lord is valuable time. God bless you. Thank you for listening. The whole things must not become common to So holy thing must not become commonplace. This word of God is, is genuine for us. Mm-hmm. Partner for Christian people to preach Christian truth lightly and without a sense of urgency. Whenever one Christian criticizes another Christian, it is like throwing holy things out to the dogs and pearls before swine. So let's be careful how we be very critical of an individual. But like I said earlier now, if, if you are doing some stuff mm-hmm. that shouldn't, you should not be doing according to the scripture, what the scripture says for you not to do, you're not judging. Amen. You're actually letting them know you're judging yourself of what the scripture says. Amen. I'll only tell you where you're wrong. And, and there's a good chance you're headed in the wrong direction if you don't straighten your act up. Amen. 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 Whenever one Christian puts out another Christian, it is like throwing holy things out to the dogs and pearls before swine. This gospel is a serious business of the law. And never to be taken like it. Souls real must be converted by the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Let your say amen. Thank you again for listening to me. My conclusion scripture comes from Colossians 4 6. Let your speech be always let your speech be always with grace season of salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man all men amen Amen. Colossians 4 and 6 let your speech be always be be always grace season of salt 
that you may know how you should answer every person. Colossians 6. I believe it's NIV, but that's what it means. Season. You say something. Don't just say something to be saying it. Say something that's going to be benefit somebody. Amen. God bless you. I'm finished, y'all. Praise God. Thank the Lord for what he has done. This is going to need a bad video. Praise God. Amen. God has done so much for all of us. You know, and I'm thankful for what he has done. I believe everybody in here should be saved this morning. Amen. 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 If you're not and young, that's all right. I'm waiting on you to make up your mind too. All my little babies, I'm waiting on y'all. Praise God. There will come a day that we'll be able to talk to you about Jesus, put you in the water and baptize you, and then you can walk around with your conditions and everybody, yes, I know I'm a child of the King. Amen. Moms and dads, talk to them about Jesus Christ. Down on your feet, y'all. I'm, I'm getting ready to pray. As I said, if you, if you fear you need to come to the Lord today, it's a good day to do it. You know, but certainly it will be more than delighted to put your name on our church roll. But God, the angels in heaven, will shout, Amen, that you have come on the Lord's side. I got to pray this morning, noon day now, for our sick and our shedding. Amen. These are the names that I have before me. I have another program, I think. Sister gave me one. I believe I don't have it here. Anyway, if I missed one, wasn't that Michael or whatever it was? Michael? You got one? You got one? I got a whole one. Thank you. Amen. Amen. These are names that we have before us today, we had a new name added to our list. But Dean is Mary Bolden, Miss Virginia Davis, pray for her. Getting a little weak now. Ask the Lord to bless her. Dean is Shirley Lovely, it's good to see her again today. Uh, Jerry Wynn, Bernice Dudes, Elsie Hamlet, I think I saw her over there too, praise God. Augusta Davis, Mildred Watson, my sister. Betty Harvey Sneed, Diane Vanell, I believe I saw Diane back there. Praise the Lord. Horace and Loretta Younger, James Dews, Michael Harley and Newport News, Margaret Pennell, Diggins Esther Thomas, John Hamlet, Jerry Davis, Howard Thompson, William and Margaret Scott Sr., William Scott Jr., Diggins Isabel Robinson, Elaine Grizzell, Carrie Scott, Diggins Fred Kenner, Mark, Mark, Morgan and Blanche Hancock, and also Sister Thorne, I forgot last Sunday, but you on my prayer list as well. Said you having some pains and all that kind of stuff. But we pray for everything. Amen. The Lord will bless you and certainly our bereaved family. Amen. Sister, brother, Andrew Spencer and the family. Amen. And we're going to pray even for uh, Maddie St. John, also for her son and the family. And certainly for the Johnson family and Peace Baptist Church. All other names, we're praying for them as well. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for such a great morning. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that your spirit blessed us. And I thank you for the strength that you gave us to stand behind the sacred desk. Yes. Thank you, God, for the moving of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the choir that sung your song to Zion in the spirit. Thank you for the musicians that played. Yes. And we thank you for all the witnesses in this room. Yes. The Lord, we pray your blessing upon this branch of Zion. Mm -hmm. Ask you, God, to forgive us of all of our sin. And Lord, we pray for that continued divine strength. Mm -hmm. Remain faithful, steadfast, unmovable, Master, to do your divine will. Yes. Oh, Lord, as we bow, God, we beg of thee that I will save a soul today. Touch somebody, Lord, that perhaps do not know you in the very free pardon of her his sins. Father, we beg of thee that thou would touch man so much so that they will fall up with that simple and wicked way and turn unto you before it's too late in their lives. God, we thank you for this week's journey. 
Father, you blessed us all week long. Kept us from seen and unseen danger. You let us lay down every night, rise every morning. Thank you, God, for the active of our limb, the blood still run warm in our veins. Thank you, oh God, that you clothed us in our right mind. And oh God, we thank you, Master, that some of our family circles had not been broken. Some of them had been broken. But God, we know that you are able, Master, to do everything but fail. We know, God, that earth has no sorrow. Heaven cannot heal. And God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for the Lord God Spencer family. Pray, Lord, that thou would bless Brother Andrew and bless his daughters, oh God, and son-in-laws. And Father, I pray, Master God, that thou would bless them so much so that they'll know that you have not made a mistake. Thank you for Sister Juanita's life, God. Oh, what a testimony she left behind. Not only financial, God, but even her testimony as a Christian in this world. Father, as we bow, God, we pray, Father, for those on this prayer list. Some of them are getting weak now. Some of them are going through different types of problems in their lives. Lord, we beg of thee that thou would touch as only you can. Lord, wherever they are, we beg of thee, God, that your grace, Lord God, will step into their lives. Your grace, O oh Lord, will lift them, O oh Lord. Your mercy will certainly suit their case. Father, as we come, Lord, we pray that thou would bless some person in this room may not be feeling well, may be wondering, Lord, how long? God, I pray in Jesus that would comfort them in the midnight hour and on that day's journey. Keep them, God, in your love and your divine care. Father, we thank you for our graduates today and we thank you, Lord, for what they will contribute to the society. But Lord, we pray that I will protect them, keep them from the hurt, harm, and danger. Master, all over this globe, uh, we're still struggling about gun rights and we're still struggling about who should own a gun and who should not own a gun. Father, I pray that thou would fix it in Jesus' name. Father, touch those in high places who make decisions affecting our daily lives. And I pray, God, that would cause men to do what's right, pleasing in your eyesight. Oh, God, bless our community. Bless our homes and bless our children. Our grandchildren as well. And oh my Lord, when we come to the end of our journey, won't be able to stay any longer. It then become your time to call and our time to answer. Master, we beg of thee that thou would receive each of us in your kingdom. Without the loss of one, we would have that eternal joy. Peace, our God, rest in thee. Father, it is in the name of Jesus, your divine, powerful son, that we're humbly by. Beg of you, thee, blessing, all petition for Christ's sake. Our soul says amen. Amen. Just before I close, I want to say thank you already on behalf of those who will help serve tomorrow. Thank you for what you're going to do. We will serve the family here at the church tomorrow. And we know that you're going to do it, be at your best to do what you do. Shall we prepare? Now may that blessed grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God. The sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest ruling about his forth and forevermore. Our soul will say, oh.